Hi everyone, um, my name is Karina and I've made my YouTube channel um, Lifting Pins and Needles. Bring you to this. I've uh, been binge watching all the sewing vlogs all summer long and I really just want to take a part in all this. So I'm going to do the seamstress tag so you can get to know me. Um, no one's tagged me but I'm still going to do it. <laughs> I hope that's okay. Um, I'm married. I have a 10 year old boy. It's my only baby. Um, I'm Chilean from the country Chile from South America. So it's quite new in this. <laughs> I haven't seen it. Most um, sewing bloggers aren't really from South America. I haven't seen. Um, it's a beautiful country. It's got lots of natural beauty. So if you ever want to come, come. <laughs> I recommend. Uh, at the moment, I'm living in Bolivia, which is uh, another country in South America. My husband was transferred here for work, so we've been here for two years. Um, it's very challenging to live here. It's very underdeveloped. Um, and there's a lot of barriers to my sewing here, like um, fabric shops. I just can't find any good ones. Uh, the quality is not that good. Um, we weren't issued a Visa card or MasterCard or any credit card um, here, so I can't buy any patterns online whatsoever or do any online shopping, so it's quite limiting when you really love a pattern that you want to make. Um, my past, I've lived in lots of countries. Um, I did all my primary schooling between Australia and the US from first to eighth grade. Um, that's where I picked up English. Um, I've also lived in Brazil uh, for many for a few years, so I know I know how to speak Portuguese as well. Uh, I lived six years in New Zealand up until 2014, um, while my husband was doing a PhD there. Um, lovely place, love it. The best place in the world. I want to go back. <laughs> So in New Zealand, I worked as a midwife, which is my profession. It was an awesome job. I worked in the delivery unit. I worked in the postnatal unit. I got quite a high, um, high level job there as a clinical midwife specialist. So in those years, I was very fulfilled in my high, my job. I was very, very happy. Um, now in Bolivia, I can't practice. Um, midwives don't exist. So I'm just stuck at home being a housewife, which is something new. Um, sometimes it does frustrate me because I know I could be doing so many things, but then I have all this time for my crafts and my sewing. So it's the first time I've ever had all this time just to like dedicate myself to this. Um, so that's a good part. I started sewing very young around 11 years old, around there, I became interested. Um, why was this? Um, basically out of necessity, if I can explain more. At the time, we were living in um, Michigan, in the States. Um, my dad was doing his PhD at a university and he had gotten a scholarship for that. So um, he got a monthly amount of money, part of that scholarship uh, for living expenses. And as a family of four, um, it covered like school and basic things. <laughs> um, not much left over for clothes at all. And coming from a culture uh, prior to that where we wore uniforms, um, uh, before going to the States, I was in Australia and we wore uniforms. So going to school and getting dressed for school was not a problem because uh, you just wore the same thing every day and so did everyone else. Um, but when we arrived in the States, it was a bit of a shock for us that um, I had to wear normal clothes and I didn't definitely did not have enough. I went through a growth spurt right at that time and most of the clothes I had just was so small on me. Um, I didn't have enough jeans, I just did not have enough. Um, at the time I had a growth spurt and was about the height of my mum. So I started wearing her clothes which was totally ridiculous. Imagine a 12 year old dressed up in like a 40 year old's, you know, wardrobe. <laughs> and um, I begged and begged my mom to, you know, uh, take me fabric shopping and buy a pattern. And I, I, I remember buying this really simple pattern. I just can't remember which one, but it was 
like a basic uh, top Japanese style um, sleeve uh, which is the easiest to make and it's basic pants with like an elastic at the waist and I remember buying this beautiful fabric and making that outfit um, and I got a lot of compliments at school for it and I couldn't believe it because they didn't know I made it um, so I started seriously sewing at 12 um, I probably made the hardest garments like more complicated stuff around 15 I'll put a picture in here. Um, I found one photo, it's quite old. Um, I had to go to like a formal dinner coming out of high school when I was 17 and um, I wanted to make my own dress. I, I like really simple designs. I would never wear like a prom dress with frills and a long skirt. I, would, I just wouldn't do it. So I made this simple black dress out of this like chiffon and I had to reinforce every single pattern piece uh, with lining material and it was a lot of work. I made the sleeves uh, just a transparent. It was quite a simple dress, but I wore it proudly. Um, I was so proud because um, everyone told me how beautiful my dress was and how elegant. I felt so great that I'd made it myself. Um, so it's the only picture I have, it's quite old. <laughs> I'm 38 now and this was when I was 17. Sadly, I don't, I can't show you the one that made me cry. <laughs> um, growing up, my mum was a school teacher, um, primary level. Um, and the school where she taught was, could get quite cold in the winter. There wasn't like proper heating. Um, this is in Chile. I'm Chilean, by the way, from the country Chile, where you have lots of earthquakes and volcanoes and forest fires and all sorts of natural disasters. That's where I'm from. Anyway. Um, she bought this gorgeous, gorgeous wool material, um, very high quality, very expensive. Um, I'd made her loads of pants before. I had a pattern, but I just don't know what happened with that one specifically. Um, I got the crotch part all wrong and the, her, that the back, her bottom looked like it was sagging. Um, I tried to fix it and I tried to fix it and I cried and I just could not fix it. it the pants were not wearable they were just horrible horrible and my mom she was so understanding she's like don't worry don't worry but I was gutted because this is like um, a really expensive fabric she bought and the plan was for the to you know to make them lie and then really warm and comfy for her to, to work in the classroom um, so I've had others but that's the only one that made me cry like devastated that I couldn't pull it off I'll talk about the past a little bit because <laughs> as I said before here where I live in Bolivia there is just no place to go fabric shopping um, up to the end of 2009 I lived in New Zealand and uh, in Auckland and there was one fabric shop called Centerpoint Fabrics in Newmarket Auckland and the fabrics there were so beautiful it was such a huge like warehouse type shop but really elegant and it had all sorts of fabrics for all like from all ends um uh, yeah every time i went there i always spent like 100 150 dollars on on fabrics and i still have some of those fabrics that i haven't made they're part of my stash um some of them are so precious i can't even bear to touch them yet um but now that i live in bolivia he shopping is mostly done on outdoor markets um people buy used clothes that usually come from the states um it's usually the worst of the worst of all the used clothes that no one buys in the states in the like thrift stores or whatever they come here um, but I've, i found some really good stuff i don't look at the clothes as such i look at the fabrics so i'm always looking for blouses or skirts that are huge like size 24 26 whatever that I like the fabric and the fabric is in good condition. So I'll just cut it all up and have these big pieces of fabric that I work with. And that is usually where I get most of my fabric. I'm not really good at using patterns. As I've said, I've used some, pat some patterns in the past, um, but I've learned how to make my own patterns. Like I have my basic 
skirt block and bodice block that I've made for years and I know how to alter that. Um, so if I see something that I like, I pretty much can just make it, like replicate it. Uh, I sort of know how my body works and how fabrics work and I've never taken a formal course um, and I'm an expert at cloning clothes. Um, so if I buy a particular item that I love and it fits really good, I will clone that pattern. I will get that <laughs> garment and just copy every single pattern piece on it and then make um, something, you know, the same. So I'm going to show you this particular top that I bought in New Zealand, at, like just random shop, but I really like the shape and the cut and, and it's like how to style. Um, I just really loved it. I'll show you now. So I've copied this pattern um, and I, I'm not going to lie, I've made about 20 tops exactly the same. Exactly the same, only different materials, some stretchy, some woven, some see-through, some with lining. But my closet is full of these tops, some shorter, some longer, you know, like some cut on the bias, some cut normal. Um, so I would say that's my most used one, but it doesn't have a name or a brand or it's like from a company or something. But it's just the one I've used the most. Um, I would say putting zips in. I will do whatever it takes to not put one in. Um, I'm even known for putting in dresses through the top and getting all my boobs squashed and just pushing it through so I do not have to put a zip in. Um, I've never had real success putting them in and that they look nice and professional. Um, I still haven't learned how to put uh, an invisible zip or concealed zip in. Um, I know it's really slack. <laughs> I mean, I've made some really advanced stuff, but they just do not have a zip in them. So I would say the zip part of it is just, I just, <laughs> no. <laughs> um, the other one is pockets. I just don't put pockets anywhere. I, if a pattern has pockets, I will remove them. You know, like if I buy something and it's got pockets that annoy me, I will take them out. I just do not do pockets either. the initial one the creative one um, because I don't rely on patterns at all um, there's a process for me to find the fabric and I sort of see it in my mind I have like an idea of what it could be and materializing that drawing the pattern um, just figuring it all out is just the most fun part for me cutting it out just imagining it made um, I'm really into color blocking now because I'm using every single scrap of everything I have left because I don't have, um, I can't just go to the fabric store and buy whatever fabrics I want. So if I have some leftover from a project, I'm going to use it and make another garment, uh, color block it with another thing and that creative part is the most fun for me. Um, I love everything. I even like hemming and unpicking, I just don't mind that. But the creative part, initial part for me is the best part. I actually sew in silence, um, yeah, pretty much. Sometimes I'll put some sewing logs um, and I'll set up my laptop right there where I'm sewing and I'll look at things, um, but not for long because the noise stresses me out a little bit. So I would say mostly silence and sometimes some YouTube. definitely PDF um, I'm all for the instant gratification um, since I can't buy patterns I have found loads of free patterns online that come in PDF pat um, format so I don't really mind all the cutting and all that <laughs> I don't have access to like a copy shop that will print it in the large scale for me either so I don't really mind cutting up to 25 pages <laughs> My sewing machine is pretty basic. Um, it's what I could find here. Um, it's the, the brand is Toyota, which I guess is not very popular in sewing machine world. 
but that's what I could find here when I went to buy a sewing machine. Um, all the other brands were sort of unknown for me. Um, I just really didn't know what they were. I was really looking for a brother because I've always used those before or singer, but I just could not find one of those here. More hobbies, I've got loads. Um, I like anything craft related, like I make, I like making things, I like cross stitching, I like making like crafts for the house, like I make my own curtains and cushion covers and I like, I like all that stuff, but otherwise I've got um, sports, I don't play as a sport <laughs> as such, but I'm quite an active person. Um, while I was in New Zealand, I got really involved in triathlon. Um, I lived right next to the beach, um, so I did a lot of open water swimming. Um, I trained for a whole year to complete an Ironman triathlon. Um, I don't know if you've heard, but it's just like one of the longest triathlons. I did this in Port Macquarie, Australia, and you had to swim for 3.8 kilometers, and then you had to bike 180 kilometers, and then run a marathon, that's 42.2, or back to back. Took me 16 plus hours to finish, but I did complete it, so I am an Ironman. Uh, here in Bolivia, I can't do any of that sport. Bolivia does not have ocean. Um, it's not safe to run on the street because there's so many stray dogs. So I have to run around like just this athletic track and it's really frustrating. Um, I can swim, but the pool isn't that accessible and not very hygienic. Uh, <laughs> So uh, these last two years I've done lots of weightlifting, so I found a really good gym and I go and lift weights um, at least five, five times a week. Um, I really love the feeling and the endorphins and how strong I'm getting and how that makes me strong for life, not just about changing my body or whatever, but how I can do things easier in life. Um, I don't need a man to help me do anything now because I'm pretty, pretty strong. So that's the end of my tag. Um, I guess I could tell you loads more about my life, but we'll leave that for later. Um, and I'm really excited with this vlog and I'm trying to see how I can start a blog as well with the same name, Lifting Pins and Needles. Um, so I hope you follow me and subscribe and see what I've got to do. I've, I've got loads of makes to show you for ja um, January and we're in the middle of February. I might make a February plan, sort of a ladyish one, because I've still got loads to do in February. Bye.